Nathaniel, that was a crazy back and forth war against someone that you said you were a fan of prior to getting into the UFC, watching him as your career was unfolding. What was that whole experience like? It was amazing, you know, to, to share the octagon with Andre Feely. You know, without sounding like a fanboy, you know, I was obviously watching him way before I was in the UFC. You know, I think when I was, must have been when I was semi-pro, amateur. You know, I was obviously following him, his team, you're our favourite, all them boys. So yeah, to obviously face him in the octagon was, was an honour and to come out with the win. Obviously he made me work for it, but uh, yeah, you know, I'd like to think that was two rounds to one um, and we come out victorious. You know, hearing the crowd erupt in those transitions, whenever you got up off your feet, or whenever you rocked um, Andre as well, what were your thoughts on that? Could you hear it or were you just completely tunnel visioned at that point? No, I could hear everything. You know, when uh, the second round he got me bad and having that crowd, you know, gives you that little extra bit of uh, life to spur on. You know, I ha there's no way that you'd have to put me out. You know, there's no way that I'm going down without a fight, especially with that crowd behind me. So, uh, yeah, you know, unless he puts the lights out, you know, I'm just going to keep fighting until, you know, the ref steps in or I'm done. There's so many exciting guys at Featherweight heading to the top 15 now. If you had to pinpoint two or three names that you're looking forward to sharing the Octagon with down the line, who would they be? I would like to fight a legend of the, the sport, and that'd be like Edson Barbosa, maybe in Brazil. Um, you know, it'd be an absolute honour again, like I just said with Feely, you know, I've been a fan of him for years, and you know, I know he's coming to the end of his career. Um, for me, someone like the Korean Zombie, you know, that would be special. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'd like to get one of the legends before they kind of retire from the sport or go on a decline. You know, obviously Edson Barbosa's coming off a win, um, he's still a hell of a dangerous opponent, so, you know, it, it, for me it's a fight that I would like. But, you know, whoever the UFC want, you know, I'll fight anyone they give me and uh, just start working my way up them rankings. Brilliant. Well done on the win. Thank you. Hi, Nathaniel, how are you? Um, I've been better. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the win though, so well done. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, in that second round, how was it? Because when you were down, I was thinking, wow, this is done, and somehow you managed to pull your way out. What's going on in your mind when you're there and trying to work your way out? So that, that first, the first shot that he got me in that second round that dropped me, poof, that, that hurt, you know, that had me rocked. Um, you know, the others, like, I think he went for a knee, you know, none of that was, you know, any good. But the, the one shot that he caught me with, he, he got me on the button. So, uh, yeah, hats off to him on that, you know, he made me work for it. And, uh, yeah, I don't know if I got, like, a scratch in the eye or a finger as well, because... You know, I got rocked, but the, the bottom of my eye was like, I don't know, really, really hurting, do you know what I mean? So, uh, I don't think he poked me in the eye, but something caught my eye and it, and it kind of threw me off a little bit. But, um, yeah, you know, I wanted my cornermen to uh, stay on their toes. Yeah. And what about, um, well, they did, they did the job tonight, so, um, what about, like, getting a, you know, a run of fights going? Get consistency going. I know you've not been in luck with time with, with injuries and things like that. So, has that affected you mentally about not having the consistency? Uh, yeah, so the injuries are boring. They're very draining, you know, especially like the last one when it wasn't even real, like a real injury. It was just a slice across my knee where I knew it would be better in four weeks' time, but it happened five weeks out from the fight. Um, so, just having that string of bad luck it is a pain in the ass, but. God's plan, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason, or well, that's the way I look at it anyway. Um, and I like to think that, you know, he's got bigger plans for me if, you know, I get injured. Maybe there was a reason, you know, maybe in the long run that's what was supposed to happen to, uh, you know, set this fight up now. You know, maybe this wouldn't have happened if I never had that knee injury in the first place. Um, so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to it now. I'm used to getting injured, so I'm, uh, I know how to deal with it. I love that. You say everything for a reason, and you know tonight is a huge reason to go through those hard moments. Yeah. Um, it's your third fight now, one four seven, one four five. Sorry. How are you feeling? You feeling comfortable in that in this weight division? Yeah. You know, I'd like to think the performances speak for themselves. You know, at no point in that fight did I feel like Feely was too heavy for me, or you know, was I out of my depth? You know, when he had me on the ground in the second round, I wasn't in a rush to get up because he had rocked me. Um, I don't feel outpowered, you know, he's very long and I felt like I, I felt fine in there with the range, you know, obviously I slipped him and 
tipped his shot and, and followed up with the right hand, which dropped him. So, mate, you know, no one's given me any problems weight-wise. You know, obviously it was, a, it was a tough fight, but nothing to do with weight, you know. So uh, I feel like going up a weight has given me that speed advantage and, you know, I get to enjoy my life and actually have food, you know.